and welcome to part 3 of my top 50 Mario Kart Wii CTGP tracks countdown. If you have not checked out parts 1 and 2, please do, because that would be kind of helpful. And anyway, another thing I got going on right now, because no school right now, so I have time to be creative, I suppose. And I am remixing a certain Mario Kart track. And I began remixing it today, and I have GarageBand now in uh, my MacBook, so I'm able to do this. I'm going to play that as the outro music, and the first person who guesses it correctly gets a shout-out in the last part of the series. Bye! At number 24, we have Waluigi's Motocross. Well, it's a Waluigi track, so I'm of course going to be a fan. And I'll admit, part of the reason this track is ranked so high is probably because it has Waluigi in it. Pokies in a stadium is kind of weird, certainly an interesting obstacle, but I definitely dig those purple fireballs. Gotta love the purple for Waluigi. Besides that, it's your typical dirt bike track, there's a lot of fun speed boosts, jumps, all that good stuff. And there's even one section of the track where the terrain calls back to Waluigi Pinball. Now that's cool. At number 23, we have Lunar Spaceway. The futuristic space atmosphere that we see here is really cool. The opening section, you're driving on the moon, and you get to trick off some craters. Now that, that's pretty awesome. Then you head to a tunnel with a bunch of speed boosts, and another speed boost section where you can see Saturn, then a section where there's half pipes and a bunch of stars. So overall, it's a beautiful level that has that Wii Rainbow Road vibe to it, both in its looks, but also its difficulty. But the challenge is definitely worth it. At number 22, we have Boshi Skate Park. This is such a cool idea for a track that honestly I'm surprised Nintendo has never really done a skate park themed track yet. The half pipes, well, I guess DK Summit's kind of like that, but whatever. The half pipes and wooden planks everywhere definitely let you know this is a skate park. And after you exit that main section of the track, you are greeted by a couple of blue toads skating. Isn't that just great? This track may be short, but it's incredibly clever and well-designed, and I do like me some Boshi Skate Park. One question, though. Who exactly is Boshi? I guess this is him. At number 21, we have GP Mario Beach. Okay, so I'm breaking the rules for my countdown, kinda. I said no retro tracks. This technically isn't a retro track in terms of it being from the main Mario Kart series, but it was in the arcade games. I've never played the arcade games before though, so whatever, it's fair game. Anyway, this track is basically Baby Park, but a little bit cooler. There's seven laps, and I'm pretty sure with the way the track works, you're actually driving faster than usual. Like, the speed is increased, so it just feels fast, which is cool. The environment is super pretty at a beach, as the title suggests, and there's one cool section with palm trees where you're driving on a bridge. Pretty cool. There's a lot of Mario Kart banners you're driving under, so honestly, it feels like there's even more than seven laps because of that. At number 20, we have Flying Kingdom. This track has a very trippy, sort of swirly atmosphere filled with vibrant magenta and blue, and also white colors. It kind of reminds me of Cotton Candy. There's a lot of detail to this track. One section you're driving through a castle, then there's a section where there's Koopa Cape Shockers after you, then a section with a bunch of speed boosts. It's all kind of overwhelming. It makes sense that it's a two lap track then, as there is plenty to take in. At number 19, we have Aura Metropolis. The main colors we have here are pitch black and neon blue, which creates quite an interesting atmosphere of the city at night. Your obstacles are these piranha plants and rainbow colored containers along with these turns you have to make while you're dodging Koopa Cape Shockers. There's even a pretty cool um, shortcut you can take with a mushroom in the middle of the track as well. Overall, it's a well designed track that is quite visually interesting as well. At number 18, we have Helado Mountain. The best way I can describe this track is a longer, slightly trickier version of Grumble Volcano. Now, the track doesn't crumble apart as you go along, but you're met with a lot of difficult turns and fiery obstacles in this track. There are some areas where it can actually drive through fire and be completely fine, which is honestly pretty cool. The overall environment, like I said, grumble volcano-like. There's this polluted dark black and red atmosphere with mountains, 
fires and of course volcanoes all around you. Creepy stuff. At number 17, we have Luncheon Tour. Quite simply, you are touring the Luncheon Kingdom from Super Mario Odyssey. All the glorious glops of Pepto-Bismol. It's all here. In all seriousness though, it's quite cool that a track drew inspiration from Odyssey, and the bright neon atmosphere does not disappoint. There's a lot of cool colors here, that is, greens, blues, and purples. There's also giant fruits chasing around, and those little fork creatures as well. Nintendo should definitely do at least one track based on Mario Odyssey and Mario Kart 9, whenever that's coming out. At number 16, we have Lava Lake. All the turns on this track feel super satisfying. The environment is interesting. It's dark yet kind of pretty at the same time. You got all this fieriness around you. You got black piranha plants, and you got our good old homie the Thwomp. Now there's a couple of fiery hoops you gotta drive through, and there's one section where you gotta avoid a lava pit by driving along the side. And there's one section where you basically drive into a fiery abyss. So it's interesting. And in the background we see red colored pipes, mushroom themed stuff. It's not quite nighttime yet. It's overall a very well decorated and fun track to play on. At number 15 we have Aquania. This track's atmosphere is super peaceful and it's basically a city under the water. It actually kind of reminds me of Cosmic Cove Galaxy a little bit with the cheap cheap swimming about, the little tangle kelp bits, etc. The turns are really fun here as you're speed boosting through them and turning at the same time. And there's one section right at the end of the lap where you're absolutely launched down into the ground and it feels super cool. This track is kind of like Cheap Cheap Lagoon, but a lot better. At number 14 we have Pipe Underworld. Okay, so this track is a lot like Piranha Plant Slide but with a darker atmosphere. There's thunder clouds and gray skies all around you but there's plenty of bright green pipes to drive through. Here you'll see lots of speed boosts, and lots of piranha plants. You'll rely on arrows to direct you through a lot of the track, and I find it quite interesting how they have the speed boost texture to those arrows. There's one section of the track where it looks like you're driving on this volcanic terrain, so that gets into the whole darker atmosphere thing. Overall, quite a cool track. At number 13, we have Ice Cream Sweetland. It's a track based on ice cream. You love to see it. And based on what you've seen earlier in this series, I am a fan of the sugary tracks. What makes this one better? Well, the general environment is more interesting, partly because I absolutely love ice cream, plus there's better turns and speed boosts. So if I were to describe this track, it'd be like a better version of Sweet Sweet Canyon, I guess. There's Grey Goombas, the Groombas Return, and Purple Penguins which are pretty cool enemy obstacle people. And of course, I love the Yoshi cookie in the background. That's cool. And finally, at number 12, we have Twin Peaks. Who wants to play Calamari Desert but on steroids? At the very beginning of this track, we have this train about to run you over at a million miles per hour. Get away from the train tracks and you'll avoid it. I learned that the hard way. But even then it can be tricky as you can be minding your own business, and then BOOM! I like trains. There's also this lush river section where it flows downstream fast, and then a section with a bunch of cows. It looks like a nice countryside adventure, that's why Moo Moo Meadows is the music. Now, the train can be a pain, the cows can be a pain, and the difficulty curve, it's high. But again, the atmosphere and track design, pretty freaking cool. It makes the challenge worth it. 